Hashim ibn Utbah, who was also known as Hashim al-Mirqal, was one of the loyal companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. But who was Hashim ibn Utbah? How did he live his life? And how did he leave this world in the state of martyrdom? This is Unsung Heroes. <laughs> Hashim ibn Utbah was the nephew of one of the really famous companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam who was named Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas and this made him the direct first cousin of Umar ibn Sa'ad who was the commander of Yazid's army against Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura. It's amazing how two cousins can be so different, isn't it? On one hand, we have one cousin who is willing to lay down his entire life for Amir al Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on the other hand, we have his cousin who is thirsty for Imam al Hussein's blood, the son of Amir al Mu'mineen. It's even mentioned that Hashim's father, Utbah, was a staunch enemy of Rasulullah. And he even broke the Holy Prophet's teeth in the Battle of Uhud. Imagine that! Such a beautiful progeny from such horrid ancestry. But that's enough about family anyway. After all, our families don't necessarily dictate who we become in the future. Our destiny lies in our own hands. Hashim al-Mirqal accepted Islam during the conquest of Mecca and he immediately became one of the close companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He was even one of 10 people who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi promised heaven upon. I know you might be wondering what does the name Mirqal mean? Mirqal was a title given to him and it means the one who runs fast or the speedy runner. And that's because he would run at the heart of the enemy speedily and fearlessly. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam bade farewell to this transient abode and he left this world, the rights of Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu wa sallam were usurped and he was left with but a handful of companions. Yet, these companions stood against the odds and they went to the mosque to object to the first khalif about his unrightful actions. One of these individuals was, you guessed it, Hashim al-Mirqal and he stood up for the rights of his rightful Imam. Hashim al-Mirqal took part valiantly in the battles during the era of the Khalifas and he even lost one of his eyes during the Battle of Yarmouk against the Byzantine Empire. After taking part in these conquests in the Levant, he then went to Qadisiyah, which was in Iraq, which in that day was part of the Persian or the Sassanid Empire. Hashim al-Mirqal was part of the army that conquered Iraq for the Muslims and he even acted as the commander of the left wing of the Muslim army. As a matter of fact, a few of the cities of Iraq were even conquered by his very own hands. So let's fast forward a few years now. The third Khalifa has been assassinated and the Muslims have collectively paid allegiance to Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamhu alayh. Hashim al-Mirqal was living in Kufa at that time. But when he heard the news, he joined the caravan of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari towards Medina who was the governor of Kufa at the time, appointed by the third Khalif. When the caravan reached Medina, Abu Musa was hesitant about whether he should pay allegiance or not. And this is quite a theme during his life. When Hashim witnessed that he was being hesitant and he didn't know what he should do, Hashim rushed and paid allegiance to Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamhu alayh, placing his own hand in the hand of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Then Hashim turned around and taunted Abu Musa Ash'ari, saying, are you afraid that if you pay allegiance to Ali, Uthman's going to come back to life and punish you? He then composed a poem on the spot that goes as follows. I pay allegiance to Ali without delay, and I do not fear any Ash'ari governor. I pay allegiance and I know by this, truly Allah and his Prophet will be pleased. When Abu Musa Ash'ari and the fickle Kufans heard these powerful words from Hashim, they changed their minds immediately and paid allegiance to Imam Ali salam. However, only a few months after Amir al-Mu'mineen took the reins of the Muslim Ummah, a huge fitna occurred. Several of the high-ranking companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam broke their allegiance with Amir al-Mu'mineen and they uprose in the city of Basra along with the Prophet's wife. In one way or another, they took allegiance from the people of Basra 
and they planned to raise a huge army to march upon Medina and take the Khilafah away from Amir al muminin salawatullah wa salamhu alayhi. At this moment, Amir al muminin salawatullah wa salamhu alayhi knew something needed to be done. But the people of Medina were too indecisive. They didn't know who to follow. This is because both of the parties seem to be quite close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam by terms of both companionship and family ties. So only a handful of the people of Medina actually followed Amir al muminin For this reason, Amir al muminin sallallahu wa sallam sent a letter to the governor of Kufa who was, as you remember from before, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. In this letter, Imam Ali alayhi salam invited the people towards jihad and struggle in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he sent this letter with none other than Hashim al-Mirqal. However, I'm pretty sure you may have guessed from before, but Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was hesitant again. So Hashim al-Mirqal returned to Medina disappointed and unsuccessful. During this battle, which was later known as the Battle of Jamal, Hashim al-Mirqal fought steadfastly alongside his Imam, breaking the enemy's ranks often. However, unfortunately, once this fitna was quelled, another fitna arose. Muawiyah arose in the Levant claiming to take revenge from Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi for the blood of Uthman, the third Khalif. He claimed that Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi was offering safe harbour to the killers of Uthman. In response to this threat from Muawiyah, Imam Ali salam gathered his companions and asked them for their consultation on this matter. Should they go to war? Or should they stay in Medina? At this point, Hashim al-Mirqal rose up amidst several other great companions of Rasulullah and Amir al muminin and he expressed his willingness to fight and his extreme faith in Amir al muminin At this point, Amir al muminin salawatullah wa salamu alayhi prayed for him, saying, Allahumma rzuqhu al-shahadata fi sabilik wal murafaqata li nabiyyika sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. O oh Allah, bestow upon him martyrdom in your path and the companionship of your Prophet Wouldn't it be beautiful if our Imam could say something like that about us too? Eventually, the Battle of Safin took place and Hashim stood steadfast beside his Imam. Imam Ali salam appointed him as one of the commanders of the left wing of the army of Islam. And he was even the commander of the infantry of Basra. During one of the days of the Battle of Safin, Imam Ali salam handed Hashim a large black standard. Perchance, that day Hashim was wearing two coats of armour. So Imam Ali salam jokingly said to him, Oh Hashim, aren't you scared that you only have one eye and you might run away? After all, Hashim had lost one of his eyes in the Battle of Yarmouk against the Byzantine Empire. Hashim replied steadfastly to his Imam, proving his faith in him. You will see soon that I am not afraid. I swear to Allah, I will attack the lions of these Arabs like someone who has given up on this world. It's even mentioned that Hashim would attack so fearlessly at the heart of the enemy that even Muawiyah was scared of him and his flag. Whenever he would see his flag waving, he would tell his soldiers to attack that area so that he could get rid of the threat of Hashim once and for all. On one fateful evening, Hashim set out against the enemy. Attacking their lines, he felled any champion of theirs that he came across. On one fateful evening, Hashim set out against the enemy. Striking their lines, he felled any of their champions that he came across. He fought and fought, even with one eye, and even after his leg had been severed, he still continued fighting, steadfast on the path of his rightful Imam. Eventually, an accursed man named Harith ibn Munzir Tanuhi attacked Hashim ibn Mirqal, striking him in his stomach. And thus, this great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa attained the lofty status of martyrdom. What's even more beautiful is that when Hashim's son Utbah witnessed his father fall on the battlefield, he raised his father's standard and struck at the enemy until he was also martyred on the same path as his father. When Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi came across the bodies of Hashim and his martyred companions, he prayed for them and said, May Allah bless the group of Islamis, for their luminous faces have fallen amidst the dust beside Hashim. Amir al muminin sallallahu alayhi then prayed over the bodies of Ammar ibn Yasir and Hashim together, and he buried them in the same bloodied clothes that they had been martyred in. It's narrated that when Imam Ali salam heard of the news of the martyrdom of one of our other unsung heroes, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, 
He said, I had thought of appointing Hashim ibn Utbah as the governor of Egypt. By Allah, had I given him the governorship, he would never allow Amr ibn As and his supporters to enter, and he would never be killed except with his sword in his hands. This is how a true supporter of the Imam should be, fearless and never willing to retreat until his last breath. So now we know who Hashim ibn Utbah al-Mirqal was, how he lived his life, and how he left this world with the lofty status of Shahada or martyrdom. So remember, if you wish to leave this world a martyr, we must first live within this world as a martyr, wherever you are. <laughs>